first official live stream. I've been a freelance journalist for about 17 years and this is surprisingly my first official live stream after all that time. So I've dabbled, I've done some tests, hopefully you can hear me nice and clearly. So let's enjoy Streets of Rage 4. So what we're going to do is I think I'll have a nice online gaming session. So obviously we're going to have to do the story, well stage select. So shall I try it on Mania? This really depends on the person who joins me. So it's Mania being the hardest setting you can do and it is pretty insane. Definitely one I need help on. So we'll just go with a random member of the public and see what happens. Generally the lag has not been too bad at all on this game. So my hopes are pretty high for a smooth experience. Oh, you've got to love that music. Ironically, this music right now is probably one of the best tracks in the whole game. Even if it is a bit of a loop and repetitive. Because it's got a bit more of a melody to it. If I had any complaint about this title, it's just that the rest of the tracks just don't have much of a melody. When I think back to games like Streets of Rage 2, and that was really... Oh, the music in that game. It's maybe made me a little bit biased. Nostalgic, rose-tinted glasses after all. And as good as the music is, is in this game from a variety of different artists. I don't know, it just doesn't quite have the same resonance in this game like it did in Streets of Rage 2. Love to know your thoughts. If you want to have some communication with me, Twitch is the best way to do it. Still waiting for an online player. If I haven't got somebody in a couple of minutes, I will dive out and just do it by my little lonesome. Because this isn't the best live entertainment, is it? Wait for somebody to join. Do you want to give it 10 seconds? 10, 9, 8. Oh, that's a shame. Okay. Let's come out of that then. Let's bring it down to hard. And let's go to. And that's it, start from the streets. Now, my favourite character has to be Adam. His attacks are very good, makes it a little bit easier to progress through the game. Uh, the others are very good to use as well, but I don't know. Adam's just got that edge. Ten years have passed since the fall of Mr. X and his syndicate. The city has been at peace until now. Etc, etc, etc. Also note, it is rumoured to be led by Mr. X's own children, the Y-Twins. They're not having any fun with that at all, are they? So this is the PC version of Streets of Rage 4, uh, I actually have it on the Xbox One as well. And one of the nice things about this title, if you buy it on the Xbox or the, P the PC version through the Microsoft Store, you don't have to buy it once and it works on both. And your save game works through both as well, so you don't have to lose your progress. Which I'm particularly enjoying. Wish more games did that. Finally, on Streets of Rage 4, you've actually got a separate button to pick items up. Because before it used to be the same as attack, which means when you're trying to attack somebody, you kept picking up things. 
This was quite a frustration back in the day. And this guy, no matter which Streets of Rage is in, still is a pain in the backside with his knife. my star move, which I've just wasted, but I'm sure I'll collect another one. Note how the enemies bounce off the wall. Again, one of the things of Streets of Rage 1, 2 and 3, if an enemy went off the screen, you'd have to wait for them to come back on the screen before you could kick the living daylights out of them. Which was not the best aspect, so I'm glad they've improved that. Thank you very much. I do love the concept in games where you just see food sitting on the floor and that you're quite happy to go and pick it up. But I guess desperation and all that. I still think this move's hilarious. It's also impressive how they survived that. <laughs> Star move required for the final boss. Hello, zombie soup. It's even more appropriate since as as it shows a zombie is the animation. Apples off the floor, why not? It's also hilarious how you can actually pick up different kinds of food. So in the settings you can set a salad instead of a chicken if you are so inclined. Zombie soup, could you confirm that you can hear me clearly over the game audio? Second question, is the game audio clear enough over my voice? Thank you very much. I think I'll need you in future, buddy. <laughs> oh, this confused me so much before on the Xbox version. I didn't read that as in. It looked like one player. 
And I think my screen was a bit too dark, so I couldn't see the pit. And I thought the game had got a bug. <laughs> and then I realised, oh look. <laughs> the silly things, eh? So the artificial intelligence in this game is certainly quite a bit better than Streets of Rage 1, 2 and 3 back in the day. When they would literally just fall off the edge in a pit and kill themselves. Golden Axe was terrible for that. I don't think Golden Axe 2 was much better. But the dude, instead in this game, they do walk into electric shocks. So the AI is still not perfect. But certainly on the harder difficulty settings, it's nice that they kite their own energy away. There we go. Yeah, I've tried the end video RTX. I think I had it on too aggressive. So it's causing some problems with my microphone for other people. I need to experiment a bit more with that though. But I was watching Linus Tech Tips and they did a commentary on how good the NVIDIA RTX voice was. And they were doing some ridiculous things to test it out. But it handled it very well. So I just need to get the settings around to think. But I haven't got it on right now, that's for sure. What's your experience of the NVIDIA RTX voice bin? So what's the deal with an electrical snake? Answers on a postcard, please. I forgot about that. <laughs> and how nonchalant are these guys with their hands in the pockets? Right, this is when you use a star move. Ah, you've used a hacked app, so it works with your graphics card. I don't blame you. It just shows how they've kept it to the higher tier, artificially. I've also got in the way a Roland Sound Canvas SC55 Mark II which if you were into DOS games, or point and click adventures in particular back in the day, <gasps> this was the MIDI module to her own. That after the MT32 as well. So hopefully I'll have that arrive tomorrow. So I'm hoping at the weekend we can play some Doom with some MIDI hardware that was actually intended for, for that game. And when I say Doom, I mean the original Doom. Not this new fandangled stuff. Right, uh, let's just drop down the difficulty a little and go to Chinatown. Just so I look half good at this game, you know. I love this level. The music's really good in this one in particular as well. But I think the whole atmosphere of it as well. 
So we've got pigeons, we've got a rat, we've got flies, some kind of vapour coming out of the the drain there. I like these little details. Looks like they're playing a game of some sort in the background. And we have a boomerang. Which if you're good, you can catch it on its way back. And use it again. It's a shame you can't go in these rooms and see what's happening. So on eating, very quickly, is going to get indigestion. Why are you picking up an apple off the floor? There's literally a little restaurant there. It seems to have enough cash. But never mind. Maybe the yellow duck on the sign put him off. You've got a sword. Use a sword! Synchronised dancing there. That takes a real skill. Ugh. All other attacks are quite frustrating, but there we go. Seems to have a chain belt of some description. I do love the way they bounce off the walls, but it is a good thing. Look at all these little specks. I just love the details. And there's some lights behind that door. It's just... I love the little details, I really do. I used to spend so much time back in the day, particularly when 3D accelerator cards we're just becoming a thing. And me and one of my friends from college used to spend so much time comparing our thoughts on texture quality and lighting quality and shadow quality. These are all things I think we tend to take for granted these days. And I think that's why nowadays I really enjoy the videos by Digital Foundry. We spend so much time going over the sort of graphical fidelity of modern games and how they compare on different platforms. It appeals to my inner geek. Have you played this zombie suit? Ow. 
Now they've proven they can do Streets of Rage 4 so good. Oh, if they do something like Golden Axe. I'm so there. Sega must be thinking about it. The critic review of Streets of Rage 4 has been very positive. It's just a bit odd because the first review I watched for this gave it 7 out of 10. They were quite... maybe a little overly harsh for it. Granted, this game does not really add a great deal to the formula. But I think those who experienced originals not necessarily looking for a massive overhaul. Now when they first announced this game I was actually hoping it was going to be pixel art to look more like the original games. So when they showed this more modern aesthetic, I was worried. I didn't think they'd pull it off. I was pleasantly surprised. So when I reviewed this game, I gave it 4.5 out of 5. So I'm a fan. Is it perfect? No? So this is probably one of my favourite tracks in the game. But the rest, I don't know, they just don't quite appeal to me in the same way. Ah, so you've got Game Pass. <laughs> You're addicted to Animal Crossing. You and everyone else it would seem. I've seen more posts about Animal Crossing than anything right now. It's probably overtaken COVID-19 somewhere. Yeah? Look at the shadows. It's just full of atmosphere and the and the coloured ambience of the way it hits the, the characters as well. Again, I like the details. Well, there's enough of them here. Okay, I'm going to use a star move. For that very reason, because they are annoying as hell. And they can literally take a whole life away, as you can see. Right. Ah. Oh. I'm gonna lose another life already, come on. Really need some food right now. Alright, it's trying to annoy these silly sausages over there. Okay, that's money, that's no help. <laughs> oh dear. Down to one life. Wonder if I'll still complete the level. So, what you're finding so great about Animal Crossing? And this is another reason to have Adam. He zips around the screen quickly. Now, unfortunately, I've got no star moves left. Okay, before we get into the boss battle, again, I like the details. Look at the shimmer on the floor. The birds at the edge of the screen in the background. The petals falling off the tree. It's... it's magical. Am I selling it to you? Uh, hopefully I am. Now you'll notice as the characters walk round, 
they're causing a little puddle movement. So just a reminder, I'm playing the PC version of Streets of Rage 4 here. I'm using, just to be a little bit nostalgic, an Xbox 360 controller. Not wireless. Just because I get fed up with charging the things as much as anything. Okay. Extra star move, good. Won't use that just yet, because I'm sure he'll get some friends coming to join him in a minute. The irony is, Adam used to be one of the slowest characters in Streets of Rage 1. You got him 4, you can do that. So he becomes one of the quickest, if not the quickest. Ah. Okay, now it's time to use a star move. Come on. Whew. Just in time. Alright, star move. And he's out. International Karate. Gosh, that's going back a bit. <laughs> What platform did you play that on? Oh, I've unlocked another character. Streets of Rage 2 Blaze is unlocked. I think I've only got one more to unlock. Okay. Sky Train. So let's have a quick look at the characters here I've unlocked. So, Blaze from Streets of Rage 1. Adam from Streets of Rage 1. You're going to see uh, repetition here. Axel from Streets of Rage 1. Now, Blaze from Streets of Rage 2, which I've just unlocked. Axel from 2. Max from Streets of Rage 2. Who's the extra one? I'm intrigued. No spoilers. Oh, you played International Karate on the C64. Yeah, I did play on the Commodore 64. But what was the first platform I played it on? It may have been something like... Was it out on the Atari ST? Can you check to see if it was on the Atari ST, zombie? I've got a feeling it was. I've got a feeling that's where I first had a go on it. But I did play the C64 version. But probably came later. I'm not sure what I make of the cutscenes in this game. I like this sort of almost comic style they've gone for. But it doesn't... I don't know. There's a bit of whiz, pop, bang, something about it. Just make it pop off the screen a bit. Oh, I remember this one. So. Well, you see this, you gotta jump. I don't think the enemy characters ever actually jump to get over that barrier. So it's quite handy. Again, the yeah, AI yeah, could have done something about that. Although it is comical watching them get hit. Maybe that's the idea. We'll give them that one.
Well, Zombie Soup, you need to tell me when you get this game and then we can try this on the hardest setting. Because I'm not doing that by myself. Serves you right. Oh, I hate that move. It drains so much energy. Oh, jumped a bit too early. Yeah. Uh, where am I? Uh oh. <laughs> oh, there I am. That was weird. <laughs> I think the game corrected itself, but I don't think that was supposed to happen. That's actually the first time I've seen the game glitch. Ideally, you need to be attacking her here. This is a distraction. An annoying distraction. Is that star move? There we go. And one thing I'm really not happy about this game is that end of level music. I have no idea what that's all about. If you can remember the music in Streets of Rage 2, for example, when the level completed, perfect. Okay, I'll try once again. Hardest setting, first level. Let's see if I can get someone to join me. I mean, it's certainly a lot of fun if you can get somebody else in on the game, just because there's that many enemies on screen. Certainly something you could not have expected back in the day on the Sega Mega Drive, even with its blast processing. So it's quite a spectacle now. You've got the facilities to do that. If only someone would join! Very positive, is it? Give it ten seconds. If no one joins, we'll try one of the other levels on a slightly easier setting. Is it? Okay, let's hop back out. Stage select. Uh, let's go to art gallery. I'm going to make this the last level for this 
edition of my very first stream. I hope you're enjoying it. Accidental combo. I bet she went through quite a lot of chemistry sets when she was younger. I can drain so much health, particularly when we have several on the screen. Keeping armor health here. There's a chicken ready to be consumed. I'm gonna take it too soon though. Okay, we'll check it now. And again, the AI, not quite so bright, they still walk into things. Okay, small details again. Nice reflections in that green ooze. Okay, let's chuck one back at her this time. Yeah. See? Just walking straight in it. We've had a few things quite lately from Sega, which is, uh, well, at least from Sega's catalogue, they've made a reappearance. So has anyone played the new Panzer Dragoon on the Nintendo Switch? That's a nice, fairly faithful recreation. Not to say it's bang on, but it's got some lovely modern elements to it. Wow. Yeah, so this game is kind of well known for its combo system, but that combo system can work easily against you as well. Again, this is one of the better tracks in the game. Got a bit of a melody to it. She's just standing in the ooze. Come on. Yeah. Come on, AI. You can do better. So we need that.
Well, this move looks like it should be in a workout video. Carrying him behind the desk. Do you accept Google Pay? No? Okay. Oh, arcade machine. There may be a spoiler here. pull something from the previous screen. That's the only clue I'm giving you. and into the fire. Okay, we'll grab the apple. a bit too eager. I'd love to know what musical instruments are used in this game. But as there's multiple artists, they might have all used quite a variety. Oh well, still got two lives left. I think I'm going to be alright. I know I'm going to be alright, really. There we go. With that table and music, but we'll let that go. And do you know, I think it's got to be done. I'm going to go on to the very first level. This will definitely be my last level. Let's have something, someone different this time. Who shall we go for? Do we go for someone classic? Okay, let's go completely retro. Let's go, oh, actually, let's go with Ice Awful Streets of Rage 2. We'll skip the intro. Okay, now we're going to go to Retro Soundtrack. Yeah. Can you believe Streets of Rage 1, 2 and 3 are like from 30 years-ish ago? <gasps> that makes me feel very old. I hate these guys with a knife so much, can't I? 
They are a menace to society. Okay, the uppercut was good timing. You can have a foot in your face for your trouble. Okay. It's gonna be like that, is it? Now that's an uppercut. I need some health. Oh. <gasps> I only just did that in time. Do you know, to say it's sprite work, it actually kind of fits within the rest of the game. Maybe. It was a slight glitch in the sprite, but maybe I just stood in a particular area where I didn't like it. Star move. I know people often compare the Sega Mega Drive music system compared to something like the Super Nintendo, but I don't know. FM certainly has its charms. And the fact that the Sega Mega Drive had the Master System music chip in there as well, the two combined, 
particularly in games like Streets of Rage 1 and 2. Still very, very good. I guess the Super Nintendo had the orchestral stuff absolutely nailed compared to the Mega Drive, which is where the Mega Drive did kind of fall on its backside a little. It's a shame the 32X didn't really sell more and have more games written for it because that had some impressive music capabilities. I love this guy's baggy trousers. I don't like his pipe though. That's not innuendo. Oh dear. Only one queen. <laughs> Graffiti on the train. <coughs> Wonder what they're trying to say there. Oops, not what I meant to do. Wow, I've got four star moves now. I think I'm going to be alright. First time I've seen a star move. Oops, again a bit too eager. Oh, I do like that. That's very satisfying. That isn't. Go on, start running. That's oh. No, I think I need to get over to that chicken. Quick, 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 quick. There we go. Wow, that looks like she's got no health left. It must be the smallest sliver. Yep. There we go. That is end of level music. They should have just gone with that.
Well, that's it for my very, very first live stream. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, hopefully I'll be back on again soon. The intention is to play Doom, the original Doom, with an authentic MIDI hardware device known as the Sound Canvas SC55 Mark II. Fantastic music by none other than Bobby Prince. So, take care everyone, and I will see you next time. <laughs>